looking at the market, you know, around generative AI as well, the rise of so much content. It's so easy actually to create content, but it's super hard to, you know, differentiate now between what's real and what's actually fake. So again, you know, leveraging some of this um, developments with AI, but with the transparency and the um, provability and so on with blockchain, I think is, is a real you know, benefit of combining. Hello, my name is Jasper Demare. I'm research lead here at Outliers Ventures and welcome to the Metaverse podcast. I'm joined here today with Ruth Galvin to talk about uh, the upcoming AI X crypto program, which we're very excited about. Welcome, Ruth. Awesome. Great to be here. Uh, so yes, I'm Ruth, the program manager for this upcoming base camp, which will be really good. So looking forward to discussing it. So I think we'll ask the most important question first, right? Why does this matter? Why is crypto X slash AI an important topic? We've obviously discussed this already like in 2018, I think, with the convergent thesis coming out. I feel like there's more excitement in the space now, that hence why we're launching a base camp. So let's get into the weeds. Why is this important? Why are we excited about this? Yeah, so we're increasingly seeing the convergence of you know these two types of technology. So AI and Web3 and crypto. The technology has been around for over a decade now, but it's really more recently that you know the rise of more complex uh, LLMs and generative AI that we're really seeing the the benefits of these two coming together. And when we look at the current state of the internet, you know it's quite clear that there's some key structural issues that are still there. So I think you know four that we also outline in the thesis is um, uh, firstly you know misinformation, lack of data, privacy, and security. Uh, the rise of bots and also algorithmic bias and centralized control. So when you look at those and you know with AI becoming more ubiquitous as well, I think those are just going to be exasperated. So you know it's really an opportunity to, to you know for founders as well to start building in this space and bring together the benefits of both of these technologies into the you know, convergence tech stack. Yeah, exactly. I think some some other observations we, we've seen as well is. Web2 is increasingly adopting AI technology in their front end as well, actually creating this sense of urgency in, in Web3 that's like, we cannot be left behind, right? I think we need to start taking um, in AI integration into the front end more seriously if we don't want to fall behind from a user experience perspective. And I think also what we've seen is that as this technology obviously falls into the hands of the masses, like through mass adoption and through application integration, um, there's some limitations. There's some limitations around data privacy. There's some limitations around scalability of the tech. Um, so what are the ultimate benefits that are unlocked by combining both technologies in, in this convergence stack? I mean, when you look at the heart of both of these technologies, you know, they're both based off data, essentially. So blockchain at more of the infrastructure level of storing data and then AI, you know, uh, building on top of that. So kind of extracting some of the value from the data and so on. So even looking at that tech stack, I think is like quite an interesting piece. Find the commonality between them and then how they're different and, and where they can um, intersect. I think it's also interesting if you try and bring it to life with an example. So looking at, you know, healthcare, for example, you know, AI models at the moment, they're, they're only as good as the data that feeds it and also the data availability. But a lot of data in healthcare just isn't available because it's really personal and private data. So if you can leverage some of the privacy preserving aspects of blockchain and crypto and combine that with you know, AI, I think you can actually really make some you know, advancements in that space. So whether that's you know, privacy preserving around ZKML or you know, some other technologies around that, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a really cool area to see you know, what, what can be built from that. Maybe as a second example, looking at the market, you know, around generative AI as well, you know, the rise of so much content. It's so easy actually to create content, but it's super hard to, you know, differentiate now between what's real and what's actually fake. So again, you know, leveraging some of this um, developments with AI, but with the, the transparency and the um, provability and, and so on with blockchain, I think is a, is a real, is a real you know, benefit of combining. And from a societal level, it's super important, whether it's deep fakes or some of this other misinformation, how can you, how can you prove it is real? 
and that impacts, you know, politics or, you know, social aspects. So, yeah, hopefully we won't see as many Taylor Swift deepfakes after the combination. But, yeah, I think those are two examples. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think there's there's a genuine excitement about, about the intersection, right? Especially because, like, as you mentioned, uh, deepfakes, authenticity, like, it's very top of mind into 2024, going into arguably, like, the biggest election again, like, from the U.S., so like solving these issues are very pressing. If you then look a little bit further out, because obviously like we're only scratching the surface of what's possible, right? So we did a lot of market mapping. We looked at the ecosystem and we've identified trends like the, sh the, the more short term trends are around, I think, augmentation. So improving existing uh, practices, for example, like uh, the authenticity checks, audits, um, for example, like um, AI driven smart contracts or like smart contract audits some of the shorter term ones. If we push it very far out, like at a long term, like more exciting stuff, we are looking at uh, ZKML decentralized model marketplace and, and AI agents. What, like, did you, what, what are you currently seeing in, 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 that, in, in that pocket of the market? Because that's, that's far out, right? Like that's the that yeah. ultimate end goal. Definitely. And I think that's an opportunity for builders and founders because it does feel like this is white space. Like we really are, at the beginning of this intersection. So yeah, we did a lot of work of really mapping who's currently building in the space and, and grouping some of those categories together. The decentralized you know, resources, so that was you know, the marketplaces um, and so on that are there. So whether that's you know, marketplaces around data models and so on. So kind of looking at the supply and demand within the AI landscape in, in Web3. Second is yeah, around AI agents. Um, I think the third category is, yeah, looking at its security and privacy preserving technology, so ZKML. And then lastly is the enhancement. So it's a broader category of the, the builders that are bringing, you know, augmenting AI with Web3 or Web3 with AI. And there are other buckets around there, but those are kind of the four groupings that we managed to do from the startup landscape and, and also, you know, the types of companies that we'd be looking for uh, roughly as well. Do you feel like... Um do you feel like this is an exhaustive list? Like this, uh, like all four buckets capture the entire space, or like how are we currently looking at it? Honestly, no. I think I think these are just a starting point because if we're right here, you know, today, we don't know what could come in the future. So you know, being very transparent with that is, you know, if a founder is building something that doesn't fit in one of those categories, I would a hundred percent encourage them to to come to OV and and just talk about it and see if it's a good fish and if, you know, some of our team can also help bring that to market and to life. So I think it's very much just the beginning and super excited to see where we go from here. Yeah, no, no, definitely. I think looking at the market map, these four pillars also underpin the program, right? Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit more like about the program, how it's going to be structured and what we can expect going into that? Yeah, definitely. So the program it will run over 12 weeks. Um, and by joining the program, you know, you'll have access to some of the top specialists within the Web3 space, within OV. So we've got, you know, tech, token, marketing, fundraising, legal, and also a broader mentor uh, network of both AI and Web3 experts. So there will be, you know, both workshops around you know, a range of, of topics, a really 360 support to, you know, grow your business. Um, and then also more of the one-to-one -one session. So really going beyond the surface level and diving into, you know, your tech strategy and fundraising strategy with our experts and then also connecting you in with the broader ecosystem as well. So, so yeah, 12 weeks and then it all culminates in an end of program demo day where you'd pitch to the network of investors and if fundraising is in your roadmap, then, you know, con continue on to fundraise. So for the founders and, and our listeners who are uh, obviously excited about this program, like where could they get in touch? How could they learn more about the program? Yeah, so... um. Uh, you can check it out on our website, so outlierventures.io, uh, and we have, you know, the thesis that's there as well, um, which we've been heavily involved in, and yeah, lo lots of information on our website. So yeah, definitely check it out, and um, you're welcome to also reach out to the to the OV team as well. So Ruth, you're going to be the program manager for this specific AI program, right? You're already very experienced with uh, decentralized marketplaces. Last year, you were hanging up the IPFS program. What are some of the key takeaways having worked with founders building in the space? 
So IPFS firstly, you know, it's all around decentralized storage and kind of retrieving data as well. So I think it has some, you know, overlap with also some of the companies that we saw in the, in the program. Maybe to highlight one, you know, in quarter three last year, we had Exabytes. So Exabytes saw the, you know, the rise um, of, uh, of AI and the cost of that as well. So they were building a decentralized compute platform. And yeah, through this program that we were running with Protocol Labs, you know, Exabytes could, could come in and, and really grow. But they've been fantastic. You know, they've grown their, their business massively since then. Really good revenue, that's revenue growth. And they've now oversubscribed their, their round as well. So it's been fantastic to see. And then I think, you know, more broadly, you know, your question, advice for, for founders building in the space. I think there's a lot. I mean, firstly, you know, both AI and Web3 are super deep, you know, technical areas that, you know, we have specialists and founders with deep technical knowledge within there. So I feel like sometimes it's also translating that into, you know, bringing it into the commercial realm and becoming a VC ready. So how do you really, really translate, you know, as a founder, your vision and from the technical concept to, you know, a scalable business model and a scalable business. So through the program, to, to give an example, in the first two weeks, you know, we'll introduce the founders to kind of 30 plus people from the ecosystem and they'll pitch quite a lot and really start to refine and iterate on their pitch and find what sticks. And that's, that's a really good uh, you know, way to also set the program of the founders building up their network and meeting others and, and finding what's the right way to also position themselves going forwards and where there might be some gaps and where they need to fill those. And it kind of sets the scene and the stage for the rest of the program, which can also become quite tailored as well. So we're launching this program, right? We're launching this AI X crypto program. What can founders expect and what are we delivering for them? Yes, yeah, so this program will, will really focus on that intersection, AI and Web3. And when we were looking at the market, you know, what are the current startups within this space and what are some of our investment pillars? I would say that there's at least four categories within there. So first category would be decentralized resources. So, you know, decentralized marketplaces, whether that's around data, models, compute. Second one is around, you know, AI agents. Uh, third is around um, uh, cryptographically enhanced AI. And then the fourth is looking at AI and Web3 augmentation. So kind of a broader category of where can Web3, you know, augment AI and also vice versa. So I would say there's more categories than that as well. Um, those are just some of the high level ones. So if founders are building outside of those, definitely, you know, still check out the program and, and apply. Um, and then also going to your question, you know, what can founders really expect from the program? I think, you know, building the ecosystem around it is, is really important and like a really key part of the program. So diving into our mentors, you know, mentors come from throughout, you know, the ecosystem. So we'll have sector experts, domain experts, previous founders. So you can learn from, you know, someone who's already been through, through that process, uh, investors, uh, and so on. And then we also have, you know, our partners. So looking at some of the past programs we've run, you know, we have, you know, partners from different protocols, also enterprises like Walmart and Farfetch. And we have, you know, enterprise advisors that we've had like KPMG. So it's really, you know, all of these top, you know, world-class partners from Web3, enterprise and, and other areas coming together to support, you know, the founders. I think sometimes being a founder, it can be quite a, you know, a solo journey or you know, even if you've got lots of people around you. So it's really trying to bolster up the founders and make sure they're connected and supported. Yeah, exactly. I think we're trying to fulfill our role again as this intermediator, right? And I, this is, will be especially important when you're dealing with two verticals, which historically have been very siloed and are now all of a sudden like converging, right? So bringing AI expertise and Web3 expertise, which has been for us like our bread and butter, will be like critical to this program, right? So it's something we're very excited about. I think it's going to be a vertical we'll be looking at for the next decade, at least. I think uh, very, very constructive on this one. Is there anything, like anything you would like to say to the founders, any last messages, like how in terms of how they reach out to you, how they can get involved? So it's been great speaking today. You know, we've covered uh, the thesis of the AI Web3 Basecamp. We've given you a snippet of what the Basecamp could look like. So if you're a founder, I would really encourage you to apply. You can find out more information and apply at our website, outlieradventures.io. So I would really encourage you to check it out. <laughs>